And Sandy, please come and join us. Sandy Hughes, can you hear? Wood, egg beater, cell phone, wire, and paint. Nine inches by four inches by 16 inches, 2020. This sculpture has a black oval base resembling pitted metal. Mounted lengthwise on an arch support is an antique hand-cranked metal egg beater. The beaters smack up against the screen of a cell phone painted navy blue and pink. Over the phone screen are spiderweb-like strands of silver. A loop of twisted wire folds over the right corner of the screen to hold up the phone and extends behind it down to the black base. Hi, everyone. Um, I am not in the disabled world. Um, and the reason opulent mobility came to my attention was a few years ago, a friend of mine had um, uterine cancer. And I was struck by the fact that she had had her lymph nodes removed from her lower body and that she had to wear those horrible support stockings to keep from filling up with fluid because she was sitting a lot. And they were the ugliest damn things I'd ever seen. And I thought she has to wear them. She was really had nothing to do. And I had asked her if she was interested in maybe decorating them or doing something with them. And um, we ended up not fulfilling that project because she got sicker. But for some reason, during that period of time, somebody had mentioned opulent mobility several years ago. And um, I looked at it and I thought, oh, that's really interesting. But I kind of, you know, it was sort of in the back. But anyway, she got um, sicker and sicker. And eventually she went into the hospital to sort of go. And um, she had brought her own wheelchair. And, and to understand Nancy, she was a thrift store maven. And so she bought the cheapest, junkiest piece of shit wheel, you know, wheelchair she could find for 30 bucks at some random, you know, thrift store. And she had brought it in and, and put it next to her bed so that she wouldn't have to wait for, you know, for treatments or whatever. The wheelchair was there and it was promptly stolen. Somebody took it. Now, I don't think they meant to. I think the hospital thought it was part of their crappy herd. So they went and found it. And sure enough, it had been, you know, corralled with other ugly wheelchairs somewhere in the hospital anyway so she brought it up to her room and she spent some time decorating it and she put a, a peacock on it and she did the, and put her name on it so it was never moved again because it was the Tarzinski wheelchair and that really inspired me and um my art practice actually has to do with I'm a, a kinetic artist or kinetic and automata artist. I, um, I work primarily in wood, but now I've become sort of other things have come in. And just like Laura said at the beginning, you know, you look at things that move, uh, wheelchairs, crutches, all those appliances, they all have a component to either help you move or they move themselves. And there's something about them that moves. So that's attractive to me, but they're so damn ugly. Not being in the disabled world, I don't know what the practicality is. I'm, I'm assuming it's some of it is to keep things hygienic, to keep them clean, to keep your body in a certain position. But, oh my God. And I, and that incident with the wheelchair, with, with the wheelchair going missing, obviously showed me that, that it's an impersonal and highly medicalized and highly cold world. And, and you need, having a project like Opulent Mobility, um, and I've seen some others where um, people are making these incredible prosthetic limbs that are just beautiful and, and the shapes of the wheelchairs and stuff. I'm completely fascinated. Bringing us into this round of calls for this year's Opulent Mobility, I had been um, involved in a, a call and response collaboration. I think there were 60 of us all together. And each artist was paired up with another artist randomly. And we had to create a a work of art in response to the other artists. One of us started off and um, you had 24 hours to make a piece of work. That, that, that was it, you, you, you absolutely had to do that. And I think it was, we ended up doing it over 16 days. So each of us had to produce eight pieces of work in 16 days, ah, no pressure. The prompt, although it allowed us to make stuff from things we had around, you know, you didn't have to go out and make a completely finished product or have important materials that would go in a museum. So. I was paired with a video artist. Um, I don't understand video art. <laughs> it, it doesn't speak to me very much in a way that I can respond to in a warm way. That's just a personal thing. But she started out and her, um, her art was way, way, way farther out than I would even, I would never have looked at this artist's work ever. I would have seen the first 10 seconds and said, no, I'm not interested. 
Well, I was forced to because I made a commitment. So I had to look at her pieces and some of them made me uncomfortable and some of them were, there was a lot of writhing and nudity and all kinds of interesting things. And I'm kind of going, what am I going to do with this? How am I going to respond? But then you start looking at things just like you look at people with disabilities. It's something that that's just there. It's just something to accept. So I, that's where I ended up. Anyway, this piece that I created um, was just made with stuff I had around the house. I called it, Can You Hear? So this piece, um, is an automata and the egg beater moves. So what it does is that the, I had a broken cell phone in the house. I had this old egg beater and I made the little wooden base for it. And you turn the crank of the handle and the egg beater beats on the machine. It beats on the front of the, the phone. And um, it makes this kind of clackety bangy, it wobbles back and forth. It's kind of amusing. So there it is. Just this, and you can't really hear it, but it makes this kind of clackety weird sound but my thought on the process was is we've got all these gadgets we've got all this stuff but we're still trapped in this with this little box that doesn't always work for us and i thought i keep i kept thinking about you know disabled materials disabled um, machines and how we've got all this great stuff now but we're still sort of trapped in this whole idea of not being able to hear, not being able to see, not being able to communicate, even though we're connected. So that's the genesis of that particular piece. And I decided to submit it. And here we all are in this lovely um, grouping of people. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm delighted. Um, and I, and I, I must tell you that I appreciate, I'm, a, I'm inspired by all you people. I'm saying the thing, but it's great because it's a world that since I'm not in directly, I don't understand sometimes um, how people are viewed and it makes me very upset that that people aren't just taken for granted um like you'd said abigail um uh, why is my other friend why are you focusing on me stop it why did why do people walk up to pregnant women in a grocery store and think that they can put their hand on their stomach for god's sake so let's just you know let's let's bring this 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 thing that laura's got here let's bring it in and make it make it so it's so cool it's cool to have a, a cool walker or a cool chair doesn't make life any less complicated on certain levels, but it, it's cool. It's, it's another accessory. And that's how I would like to, to view it. So there it is. That's my story. Thanks, Laura. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, yeah, honestly, thanks. I was really appreciated. And also because we didn't have anything about hearing. Right and other pieces. So I'm trying to do this as inclusively as possible. And that was not a topic we've touched on in past exhibits. Right. So that was a real pressure on that one, Mike. Great. Thank okay, you. there you go.